Welcome to the lecture series on policy gradient in artificial neural networks. In this video, we apply the log likelihood trick to a simple example. So we have a single neuron which receives input x and it can give two different outputs, either y equal 1 or y equal 0. And these outputs correspond to the two different actions. The policy is given by this expression here, and it's just sort of the standard function, the nonlinear function of a neuron. This is the case for output one. Now for output zero, it's the complement. It's just, just one minus G. So let's rewrite this policy and uh, let's do this in the following form. I would write, I write this policy, which depends on my parameters w, y given x is just g of w times x. And this is true if the output is one. So let's put an exponent of y. So if y is equal one, we are back to the first equation. What do we do with the second equation? Well, let's write this as one, one minus g wx. And I put an exponent, exponent one minus y. So if y is equal to zero, it picks up this second term. So both equations, one and two together are now implemented in one single equation, which I call equation three. Now, we want to use the log likelihood trick. Therefore, I now look at the logarithm of this policy. And uh, the logarithm of something with an exponent y gives just y times logarithm of g. I don't write the argument now. And then I have a multiplication sign here, which translates into a plus sign. And then I have another exponent, which is pulled down. And then it's logarithm of one minus g. Now, I'm interested in a derivative. So therefore, Let's now take the derivative with respect to one of the many weights. And I pick weight wj of this logarithm of y given x. And then the g contains the w. So g is a function of w. So if I take the derivative with respect to w, what I get is uh, y over g times g prime. We use the chain rule and then we use the chain rule again. So I take, if you look at equation number one here, I take the derivative with respect to one specific weight and what pulls out is this factor xj. And then I have the second term which is this term here. I take the derivative with respect to the weights. So what will happen is that I have a minus sign and I have a one minus G in the denominator. I have a one minus Y in the numerator. I have another G prime and I have another X J. So if we now use this in the formula where we optimize the reward, and remember the reward depends on y and x, we look at the averaged reward. So now we use the formula from the log likelihood trick. So delta wj, the general formula is alpha times r y x, 
times the derivative of the logarithm, but that's what we just calculated. So let's put the terms together that I can pull out of the equation. So I will have a g prime that can go in front. I will have a y over j minus 1 minus y over 1 minus j, 1 minus g, and then I have a xj. So this is now the final update rule after just three lines of calculations. So this is the online rule that you can use to update the weights in this little module of an actor that I have sketched down here. You have just rewritten the formula and now I would like to work a little bit and make the formula more intuitive, easier to explain. It still looks pretty much like an ugly formula. It has many terms. It looks not very nice. So the first obvious thing, and this is high school math, is we can try to put things onto a common denominator. So I pull out the alpha, and then I have a g prime and g times 1 minus g, and then I put my r of y x. And then what I get here is I have to multiply with 1 minus g times y minus second term 1 minus y which needs to be multiplied with a g. And then I have my xj. So now let's look at a couple of terms. So I will have here a minus g times y. And I have a plus g times y. So this will go away. Then I have a term that's left. And the term that's left here is just a term that's y. And on the other side, what I have left is just a term that is g y minus g x j and i can copy the rest g prime g 1 minus g r of y and x that's already a nice formula but i can make it even nicer so let's take let's have a look at this actor here it has two outputs What's the average output? What is y bar? Well, it will give either a 1. So it's 1 times, but what's the probability to get a 1? Well, this is just this first equation here. So it's 1 times g. And then it can also give a 0 plus 0 times 1 minus g. Well, but this second term is multiplied with 0, so I can forget about it. So the mean output is just g. So I can rewrite this g in the following form. I can say this is the average of y whereas this is the actual y. And then I can copy the rest, xj alpha g prime g times 1 minus g 
r of y and x. And this is my final update. Now, this allows nice interpretations. And I will go over the interpretation on the next two slides. So I have some factor here in front. And then I have the reward. And then I have the actual output minus the mean output or expected output. And this is the input. So let's look at these terms. So the update can be written either as two if conditions or as this summary formula that I just derived. And now I want to give the interpretation. First interpretation, the update of one specific weight component of the weight vector, Wj, is proportional to the input, xj. So if you put this back into vectors, then it says the change of the vector is in direction of the input. And now this is pretty much the perceptron rule. The weight vector, we are in an online setting, we apply some example, the weight vector will always change in direction of this example. So weight changes will be proportional to, to x. So that's the first observation. Just like in the just like as we said, a perceptron learning rule turns the weight vector in direction of the new input, we can now say the policy gradient rule turns the weight vector in direction of the input. So this is the first part here that we discussed, the input part. Now let's look at this as a connection between two neurons. J is our sending neuron. It's before the contact point, before the synapse. Therefore, it's also called presynaptic neurons. It's before the connection. And then I have another neuron, which is after the connection, the postsynaptic neuron. Now, the postsynaptic neuron describes the output. I'm here in a little actor that only has a single neuron. The output is the action. And then we can say here, well, the output is this y minus expected y. So now I have a situation where I have three factors. I have a presynaptic factor. The weight change is proportional to the input. I have a postsynaptic factor. That's the actual output minus the expected output. And then the whole thing also depends on the reward that I receive in this trial for this configuration. I get an input, I get an output, and for this combination, I get a certain reward. So it's like a reward information is communicated all over the neural network, and the weight change in the end depends on the reward, on the part of the output, the postsynaptic neuron, and it also depends on the input. And this is a structure that can be linked to biology. So this learning rule that we derive from policy gradient using log likelihood trick that at first sight may have looked frightening has a straightforward interpretation in terms of a weight change that combines three factors, a pre-factor, a post-factor, and a reward factor. Let me add one remark. We said we maximize 
the mean reward. And doing this, we derived this online gradient rule. Now let's just draw a little picture to get to give you a flavor of what this optimization is. I have here my parameters, which I call the weights. I pick out one of the weights and I plot here my mean reward. And the idea is that this function has some maximum and we want to walk up towards the maximum, which would be at this value here. So if we maximize this function of r, then we get a result, an online gradient rule that contains the r in one trial as a factor in front. Now, if you think about this, there's something interesting because this argument means that the following rule is also an online gradient descent rule. Instead of r, I now have r minus b. And this is a little bit like doing the same graph that I did before, but shifting, shifting the, the scale. It's the same function, the maximum is at the same location, but now what I plot here is r minus b. And if I now start the same derivation that, I, that we did up here, but I start with r minus b, then I will get the rule here. And that means it's possible to subtract the baseline. And in fact, subtracting a baseline that's close to the average is very good to suppress fluctuations to decrease noise in the online gradient descent method.